35 heavy light to runway 25, left back to line. Number two, following Tempe Heavy Airbus 3, a mile farm. Okay, number two. What's going on guys, Flyby Simulations here, and welcome to the 8th episode in the full flight portion of this aircraft's dissected series, where we delve into every switch, knob, and display in the flight deck of the Zebo Mod Boeing 737-800. So, in the previous episode, we covered the climb and cruise phases of flight, and in this episode, the main highlights, as you can probably tell from the title and thumbnail of this video, are going to be taking a look at the initial descent planning and approach phases of flight. So, without further ado, let's jump into the flight deck and get started. Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the flight deck of the Boeing 737-800, and as you can see, we're still in the cruise phase of flight, but we'll be approaching our top of descent point very soon, following which we will begin our descent into Los Angeles. So, before we begin manipulating any switches or panels inside the flight deck itself, let's plan for our arrival like we did for our departure by looking at approach plates and aerodrome charts for our arrival into KLAX. Okay, so just as a reminder to all those of you who haven't seen the flight planning episode in this series, our arrival procedure into Los Angeles is going to be the SADI 8 star, or standard terminal arrival, and our arrival runway is going to be 25 left. Additionally, our parking gate is going to be gate 25, as seen at the beginning of the flight planning episode in the series. Now, the way I like to start planning our descent is to plan backwards. What I mean by that is to first identify our parking gate, so our final position at Los Angeles where we will set our parking brake and shut down our engines, and work our way backwards. In the correct order, that means identifying where we're going to park, then identify the taxi route from the runway we're going to land at all the way to where we're going to park, then understanding the final approach procedure to the runway, and finally looking at our overall standard terminal arrival procedure into LA. So, let's start with the first step and take a look at where gate 25 actually is at Los Angeles International Airport. Alright, so welcome once again to Navigraph Charts ladies and gentlemen, and what you see here is a parking bay chart for KLAX. After scouring through the different terminal buildings, I finally managed to find our gate, and it is near the north complex of LA here, at Terminal 2 as you can see. Now this chart only shows us a selection of parking bays in a concentrated region of the airport. To see the entire airport, including the runways and the primary taxiways, we need another chart, namely the airport information chart, so let's pull that up now. Alright, now here we have the full airport information chart. And as you can see, it has all the runways, taxiways, and terminal layouts on it. Now from the previous chart, we worked out that gate 25 is located at terminal 2, towards the northern complex of KLAX. And looking in a similar direction on this chart, we figure out that terminal 2 is right here, and gate 25 would probably be somewhere here. Additionally, our arrival runway, runway 25 left, is right here. So as you can probably make out, it's going to be a relatively lengthy taxi to our gate. So let's start working it out. So we see that the runway length is going to be around 11,000 feet or 3.4 kilometers, which is extremely long. So we will need to break as vigorously as we would have if we were landing in a small regional airport with shorter runways. After landing then, we would vacate the runway on the right side typically at Hotel 7, Hotel 8, or Hotel 9 over here depending on our accuracy during touchdown. Regardless of where we vacate, we will take this hotel taxiway all the way till this Lima taxiway, and will then cross this runway, runway 25 right, and take this taxiway all the way till the end. Here we'll turn right onto Echo and track straight until reaching this Delta 9 intersection, where we'll turn right and park at gate 25 at Terminal 2 at Los Angeles. Though long, I think the taxi procedure will be relatively straightforward, so hope that makes sense. Okay, so coming back one more level, let's take a look at all of the important information we need for the approach procedure towards runway 25 left at LA. So, let's start by noting some of the information from this placard on the top left. On the top row, as you can see here, we have all of the relevant ATC communication frequencies, including the ATIS, approach, tower, and ground frequencies. However, since we're flying without ATC, we won't be needing any of these for today's flight. Coming down to the row below, we will most definitely be needing all of this information. So starting from the left, we first have our localizer's frequency, 
which is a navigational frequency we would dial into the radios to be able to capture the localizer for runway 25 left at LA and help us perform an ILS landing. Right next to it, we also have the final approach course for the runway 25 left, in this case 251 degrees, which we will be entering into our course selector knobs on the MCP panel. Coming further right, we then have our glide slope capture waypoint as well as altitude. So ideally we should be capturing the glide slope, which is the vertical segment of the ILS beacon, at around 1,900 feet when we intercept this Lima India Mike Mike Alpha waypoint. Now this should automatically be set within our FMC as the software has access to all of these constraints and regulations. Coming further right, normally we would find our minimum decision height for landing here. However, in this case, the chart tells us to refer to the ILS minimums. Now the minimums on this particular chart can be found all the way at the bottom right here. So for a standard CAT1 or Category 1 ILS approach towards runway 25 left, our decision height will be 304 feet barrow or 200 feet in radio. Finally, coming further right, we have the airport elevation, 128 feet. So we'll be dialing that into our pressurization selector on the forward overhead panel. Coming underneath, we have our missed approach procedure, which contains rules that govern what we would do as pilots in case of a go around or an aborted landing sequence. Now we personally only need the initial altitude we need to climb to as well as the heading to maintain while performing a missed approach procedure. So our initial altitude will be 2000 feet and we will be following our runway heading of 251 degrees, both of which we will be entering into the MCP panel when we are fully established on the localizer and glide slope for runway 25 left. The rest of the procedure simply dictates how to set yourself up for another try at the approach, but I'm really hoping we won't have to perform a missed approach in this instructional episode. Finally, on this placard, we also have our transition altitude as well as level, which are both 18,000 feet, so we'll be looking to switch to the local altimeter setting at Los Angeles as we approach 18,000 feet during our descent. So, the final chart we're going to be looking at then is this overall start chart, which shows us our standard terminal arrival procedure into Los Angeles. You might remember seeing this chart from episode 7 in this series, but if you need a refresher, here we see the entire descent and approach into KLAX. So, according to the SADI 8 arrival procedure, we will be coming in through Reyes and will then come to this Fillmore VOR, which you guys might remember as the FIM waypoint on our route from the previous episode. After FIM, we'll be heading to Simon, then to Bayest, and then we will be turning left 070 degrees, at which point we will be parallel with the runway. We will then self-vector ourselves and complete a right traffic pattern to land at runway 25 left at KLAX. So that's pretty much going to be our entire route from initial descent all the way to parking at gate 25 at LA. Now let's jump back into the flight deck and start preparing the aircraft for arrival. Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the flight deck. So now that we know all the particulars of our arrival information, let's start preparing for descent as it'll creep up on us pretty quick if we're not well prepared. Now according to the Ken Air checklist, we want to be entering the star and arrival runway information about 10 minutes before reaching our top of descent point. However, as mentioned in previous episodes, to preserve the linear and instructional nature of the series, I entered the arrival procedure as well as the arrival runway on the ground at San Francisco itself, so we're already prepared in that respect. Coming down to the progress page on the CDU, here we can see that we're around 60 nautical miles away from our top of descent point. As we cruise to the top of descent point, I'd also like to let you guys know that we will be descending in incremental altitudes just like we did when we were climbing. So from our current altitude of 35,000 feet, we will be first descending to 18,000 feet, which is our transition altitude. From there, we'll descend down to 10,000 feet. After this 10,000 feet altitude checkpoint, we will slowly descend through the different speed and altitude constraints on our arrival all the way down to 1,900 feet which was our glide slope capture altitude for runway 25 left at KLAX. So I'll let you enjoy the rest of the cruise and I'll see you when we get to around 20 nautical miles away from our top of descent point.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, hope you guys enjoyed that little cinematic portion of the flight. As you can see on the progress page, we're approaching our top of descent point pretty quickly. So let's go ahead and first dial our altitude down to 18,000 feet on the MCP panel like so. This will tell the aircraft that it is now clear to descend down to the specified altitude after the top of descent point. Now one thing to note here is that the descent process will start automatically when we hit the TOD point on our route. But if ATC instructs you to start the descent earlier, simply come down to this FMC and press this descent button. As you can see here, we have this option that says descend now. So assuming you have a lower altitude selected on the MCP, you can simply press this button and press execute to be able to start the descent. Let's go ahead and do that here since we're almost at the top of descent point anyway. As you can see, and probably hear, the engines are now starting to spool down a little. Additionally, on the primary flight display, we also see this little pink triangle appear on the vertical scale ID enunciator, which is supposed to represent our ideal desired vertical path if we are to stick to the VNAV profile. Obviously, you will also see our altitude start to decrease at this point. Now at this point, depending on the severity of the descent, you could turn the seatbelt signs from the auto position to the on position. In our case, let's go ahead and do that now just so we don't forget it in the later phases of flight. Okay, so with the descent started, let's start running through the descent procedure, where the first item on our list is to turn off the center fuel pumps if we have less than 1,400 kilograms of fuel within them. As you guys already know, we're not really carrying any fuel in these center pumps for such a short flight, so nothing to do there. Next up, let's go ahead and set up the pressurization panel by inputting our landing altitude. So the airport elevation for LAX, if you guys remember, was 128 feet. So let's enter 150 feet into this landing altitude display, as it only changes in increments of 50. Next up, let's come over to the forward panels and press this recall button to make sure we don't have any master caution alarms within the flight. And all looks good. Next up, we have to enter our landing reference speeds into the CDU just like we did for the takeoff procedure. So let's come down here and go over to this init ref or initial reference page by pressing on the corresponding button right here. As you can see, the aircraft has already recognized that we are in the descent phase of flight and has automatically brought us to the approach reference page. On the top left here, we have our gross landing weight and below it, we have some specifications relating to the airport, such as the length of the runway we're landing at, as well as the localizer frequency and course over here, which is the same as the one we obtained on the charts previously in the episode. So the first thing we're going to do on this page is to decide and select our landing flap position and consequently the approach speed as well. Now for a long runway such as KLAX, we could perform a 30 degree landing as the runway is very long and we'll have ample time to stop even if our approach speed might be higher. However, if you guys are practicing landings for the first time in the airliner, I would highly recommend you guys to always pick flap 40, which is the highest flap position available. This is because controlling the aircraft at a lower speed is always more easier than coming in at a faster speed with a lower flap setting. So for the instructional purposes of this video, I'll go ahead and select flap 40 for our arrival as well. To do this, simply line select this flap 40 position over here and as you can see, that copies it to our scratch pad. We then simply go ahead and paste that into this flap slash speed window right here. With that done, it's time to set our decision height, which as you might remember was 303 feet barrow or 200 feet radio. Now since we set our decision height in barrow as we were departing, let's input it on the radio this time. So simply go up to this EFIS panel and move the larger minimums knob to the radio position and turn this knob all the way to 200 feet as you can see on the PFD. Now we should expect a minimum callout when we are 200 feet above the ground during our landing to establish visual contact with the runway or perform a go around. With that done, it's time to set our nav aids for arrival, which basically constitutes our localizer nav frequencies and course. So simply come down to the central pedestal and enter the localizer frequency for runway 25 left we obtained earlier in this nav frequency selector, which is 109.90. 
Doing this on both sides is a good habit as that will allow you to perform an auto land procedure if you need it later on. With the frequency entered, we'll also go to the MCP and enter our approach course of 251 degrees into both the core selector knobs, like so. Finally, we'll go ahead and set the auto brake setting we will be using for our landing today. So as seen on the taxi chart previously in the episode, the runway is extremely long and we'll want to stop as late as possible to get onto the Lima taxiway, so I think we can go for auto brake 1. So with that all done, let's continue our descent to 18,000 feet and I'll see you guys then. Alright ladies and gentlemen, so as we approach 22,000 feet, it's time to start looking at some of the arrival information at KLAX. The way to do this is actually pretty simple, as we simply need to head over to Google Chrome and get what's known as the METAR report for the arrival airport just like we did when departing San Francisco. So on screen now, you're seeing a screenshot of the important weather information I got online. So we have the temperature, dew point, as well as the surface winds. However, the most important piece of information here is, of course, this barometric pressure that we must input within our altimeter, which is here, as you guys can see. So let's go ahead and enter that data within the EFIS panel as we get ever so closer to 18,000 feet. Now, a neat little trick you can employ here is to set the altimeter setting even before getting to the transition level. The way to do this is to simply go over to the EFIS panel and on the altimeter selector, simply rotate the outer knob to the specific barometric pressure setting we wish to set. As you can see at the bottom right of the PFD, we still remain in standard altimeter mode, but right beneath it, the aircraft pre-selects the altimeter setting so that we can simply press this middle STD button on the altimeter selector to switch from standard mode to the manually selected barometric pressure as we approach our transition level. Pretty neat. So ladies and gentlemen, that's that for the descent planning and initial approach procedure into LA. In the next episode, I'm going to be at the helm of the ship and will be live commentating the entire final approach, which encompasses our descent from around 15,000 feet all the way down to the ground at runway 25 left. Just like the previous episode, I'll be keeping this conclusion short, as I want the transition from this episode to the next to be as seamless as possible. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to perform a full stop landing at the like button and the subscribe button, and press the bell icon for future notifications from this channel. Also, be sure to fly by the comments section and let me know if there's any questions you'd like me to answer for you. As usual, thanks for flying by.